my video blog in my studio. I'm Gail Weisfield, a professional watercolor artist. I have a piece of paper that's been stretched on a boga board and I put my wet wash on and dried it and now I'm ready to do my dry brush of my cattails. It's so much fun and if you use your tools rather than try to draw your shapes they become so much more natural and it really produces a beautiful painting. The brushes I'm going to be using for today's demonstration are my pretty standard brushes. I have a flat brush uh, in various sizes because I may want different size cattails and then again the rigger and the uh, dagger brush for fine lines details and the dagger makes a beautiful uh, leaf so I'll show you how to do that and then of course once again the uh, palette knife I scratch all my lights and trunks and things they look more random than if you were to paint them with a with a round brush. Now I'm going to demonstrate a cattail and then we'll put one in the painting. I'm going to double load the brush which means I'm going to load one side of the brush with one color and the other side with another color. I have used a brush that has quite a bit of uh, about a three-quarter inch uh, flat brush. I start my cattail at the top and then I swing the brush down letting each color darker at the bottom giving me a beautiful uh, variation in color from the top to the bottom. Now with my palette knife I'm going to pull the stem down from the cattail. It's a beautiful cattail. It has a, a little bit more life to it than if I had just tried to draw it. Now I can charge some additional color into it if I decide I want to add some more colors and enrich it. I can take and give it more texture. I can also take my palette knife and scratch a few highlights on it. Another thing that I might do to this cattail to really make it interesting is I may add a little fuzz to it. So with a very clean brush, while I still have moisture down here in my cattail, I'm going to add some clear water. Not a lot, because if it's too much, it's going to run too much. So I didn't touch the pigment. I just added the extra water. Now I'll pull these two together with a clean brush. And what you're going to get is that little bit of pigment coming over into the moisture I just applied to my paper and it gives you the fuzz at the bottom of the cattail. Isn't that fabulous? So now let's go ahead and add a leaf with my dagger brush, which I enjoy using so much. Plenty of water in your brush because with watercolor we don't drag our paint, we want the paint to flow. So I've just got a nice dark here and I want the paint to just flow out. Now what a beautiful, beautiful, detailed and delicate edge you get with this dagger brush. You can turn it right or left and it's just got a quality to it that is just so natural and so beautiful. So there's a great little cattail. I might darken the stem just a little bit just to make sure that he feels like he's going to be standing up and I think that's a perfect cattail demonstration. Okay. So I'm satisfied with my brushwork. Now I'm going to place a cattail in my painting. So using the same technique I just painted, I'm going to uh, put my cattail in. I want you to think about the fact of the relationship between the rhythm of the cattails, the height, and how they relate to each other in different size. It has to be interesting. I can't just put a, uh, a hot dog shaped form in here and expect it to be beautiful. So I have to use a lot of care in where my placement is. So I'm going to put another cattail and I feel like it's just an awfully nice place would be right in here but I'm going to turn the direction and bring it down here using again my double loaded brush. This cattail is over the lightest place. I make a beautiful cattail, swing it down. Then again with my palette knife it's the perfect way to bring a very random trunk that I could not get or stem that I could not get otherwise. I have the ability at this point in this cattail, if I want to charge it with some more color, I can really give it a, a beautiful glow if, if, because it's still wet and I can give it uh, texture and rough edges with my palette knife. I like to bring some of that orange down the stem and now let's put some beautiful leaves in here and I like that orange, why don't we add a little bit of orange in here in some of these leaves. Remember, make your paint flow. It's the grouping that we're considering. It's the different shapes. If I had five cattails that were all equally placed and all the same shape, I wouldn't have a very interesting painting. But instead, I've got some variety and some interest in here, and it gives me a, a much more interesting painting to look at. And they read as a group. So that would be uh, basically what I would do when I painted a cattail.